this is the Yomi uh, link bone going. It's not sedated. He is um, a 60 year old post job. Do one arch at a time. I didn't do immediate load because I wanted as fast a check time as I could get with him. And, uh, he's a pretty frail fella. So that's the this is using bone screws. They're strikers bone screws, and they are monocortical 20 by 18. That took, I mean, that was edited down to a few seconds, but that took literally 90 seconds, maybe two minutes to get all the five of those screws in with just buckle infiltration. The other thing you can appreciate. If you look at that lower right hand picture is I can see everything. I don't have guides blocking my view. I do not don't have any airway constriction. He's wide open. And so I like that from a visual standpoint and from a safety standpoint. Um, again, this is just comparing the Yomi link bone to a stackable guide and how much tissue reflection had to go on to get that guide. And then that's what hurts our patients both post operatively is all that tissue reflection. You know, the bone really doesn't hurt. It's it's uh, the periosteum being released. So this is the fiducial one, and then once that's attached, he goes to C CBCT machine. You can see the uh, silver spheres. Those are pick markers that show up on the X-ray that correlate the data and allows us to see and make sure that the CT data and the image on the screen are matched up correctly. Again, this is my standard setup. You do have a driver who's running the laptop that will allow you to go from free mode to pausing it to, um, to uh, guided and she controls that, the surgeon does not. So there's an accountability in that too. Um, in this particular picture, this is just a kudos to, to, uh, to Neosis. This stick during COVID, um, you know, they weren't allowed to travel and so, the support of the company, they got creative and we would FaceTime all the surgeries. And so Neosis wanted to be sure that they had a rep there and this is how we did it. So just kudos to Neosis. They've been a great company to work with. Um, yes, they, they do pay me to, to work on their stuff, but they don't pay me to say that kind of stuff. They really are a good, good company. The owner's a fantastic guy and I hope you get to meet him someday. He's really going to change the, the, the way the industry's done with robotics. So um, again, you need three people to do it. Um, so this is, again, this is the magic sauce. This is the half headed arm attached to the patient. It's going to track his motion. So if he moves left, the robot arm moves left. If he moves right, it moves right. Um, if he comes out of the chair, starts coughing, that drill is going to follow him out. And so this really is the magic wand to the whole thing. Um, and it's super lightweight. The first one we had weighed about five pounds. And so it was continually pulling the patient's head, whichever way it would start to gravity gravitational pull and so this one's weightless it's completely weightless in fact when we first got it we just held a, a piece of paper underneath it and moved it with a piece of paper so it really is um super light it doesn't pull on the patient at all and you don't want it to because you got screws in here or the yummy link teeth which is uh, just an impression that's tightened down so um, you really don't want any pull from that thing once you line it up the, the hand piece stays put in place and so i could take my hand off of it and that that handpiece literally stays right where the osteotomy is supposed to be. And so if the patient moves, it moves with him. And I can't manhandle that when it's in guided mode. That's the haptic physical guidance. Real big for me. Got it. Hand piece down. Oh, drill. A lot of noise there, buddy. Yeah. All right, so you heard those beeps. The beep, you know, told me I was in the right position. She said, drill. I when I got to depth, beep, beep, beep. I got a triple beep. And that, that's really important when, you know, when you're doing these surgeries, there's a lot going on. And so the, the audio is really a big deal. Open up really big. Hand piece down. 
All right, three. You heard that, those audio sounds, which is a big deal to me. Um, this is what you see on the screen. Uh, this is not, a, this isn't live of that case, but but this is just showing you that as the drill's going in and where your implant's planned, that this is a stock image. Um, this implant should actually be back here. I'm a little, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but you're seeing this on the screen. The nice thing that it shows also on this screen, one, you're, you can see where you're in the anatomy, whether you're looking at this screen or looking in the mouth, which is different from like navigation where you have to look in the, on the screen the whole time. It's telling you what drill, what implant you're putting in, and if there's any kind of offset. And the offset is if you're doing subcrestal and things like that. So you can totally control the depth. Again, buccal lingual presentation. I have all three images open on my screen at all the time. So I'm looking at all of them at the same time. Um, just to, to really ensure that I'm where I'm supposed to be. And again, all the data you need, there's offset if you need it. Um, it tells you when to move the handpiece and where to go. And then once you're in the position, it beeps at you and then you can go. Again, drilling the depth when, and here's an example of an offset. Um, when you get to 10 and a half, you cannot go further, it stops. Um, and, and that's it, you can't go any further. And here's a video of, there's no audio of this one. This is me actually placing the implant. Um, notice my hand very loosely on that hand piece. I'll actually probably re-grip it. Um, and it doesn't move, it stays put. I may not let go on this one, I can't remember, but um, that hand piece is not gonna come out of that position. The only way it is is when she hits free and then I can pull it out. But also notice that's a regular implant driver. I'm not having to go through a guide, use anything special, anything long. Um, it's just your normal um, armamentarium. This is removing the indenture split. It, it literally takes, gosh, a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And then you just have these really small holes that when we see them post-operatively, there's, there's zero issue there. And so, um, when that thing is in place and secured, and actually this is an old link, Yomi link, the new one has seven holes in it, a little bit different shape, um, but it, it is a fantastic, you, you literally can pick the patient up uh, when you got it in. Um, so this is our post-op image, and you can see we've sutured up, we have put our multi-unit abutments on. I did do a little bit of, of uh, envelope incision and just a slight amount of bone reduction for this case, but again, you know, a couple of interrupted sutures and we're out of there. Not a big deal. Again, he was a post heart attack, so I didn't want to beat him up too bad. We've since done the upper arch and have him loaded now. Um, and, and actually, I, I, when we started this case, he was going to be a, um, a stacked guide case from uh, a, another company. Um, and when he got released to do the surgery, it was like nine months later and the company that I originally got the sequence of guides from, hint, hint, um, would not verify if, if the accuracy of the fit anymore. They wouldn't give me their STL files and they wouldn't stand behind it. So I was out about $7,500 in lab bills. And so I just did it Yomi style and, and everything worked out great. Um, so here's the, the plan. And so I want to, oh, we're gonna compare the pre-op versus actually where the implants ended up. And so there is the post-op CT image. And you'll notice that the, the 18, 23, 25, 27, 20, the exact same. This one, the 31 position, is actually more mesial than where I planned it. And the reason is when I went to put the multi-unit abutment on, this one spun. So I was able to go back to the um, planning station, move the implant mesially. I still was worried about the nerve. And so I was able to go back and then place a, 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 that same implant a little bit further mesial, still able to guide it into place because I wanted to watch that nerve. I was knew I was getting close to the nerve. So they were all delivered, um, guided, fully guided and, uh, all completely robotic. So, um, we were able to change the plan 
uh, mid case, which was, was pretty cool. And so again, just rehashing um, the three different options, complete and go and dynamic. Complete and dynamic are really pretty similar. Complete's just more of a pre-planning. Dynamic, you can plan day of. Go is imageless where you're just basically free handing it and then allowing the, the uh, machine, the robot software to mimic your initial osteotomy over and over again with depth and angulation and then also parallel multi-unit implants. Jay can certainly uh, explain that to you. We're actually gonna show, I did not do this get, the case I'm getting ready to show you, Dr. Nikovic did. Um, some of you may know him, he's an oral surgeon, excellent oral surgeon. Um, but this was the, the, uh, the first Yomi Go case he did. Um, a lot of people like it. And so with the new software, you can, you can uh, tell the, the computer where you're gonna put your, your Yomi link and also the tooth number of where you're gonna be working. Um, this is the Yomi 2.0 software. This is the Yomi link tooth in position. And then this is an image of the Yomi link bone. This is a new one. And um, you can see it's got a little bit more of an acute angle and there's seven options for your um, screws. The reason why I like this pre-planning is you can pre-plan where you're gonna place this splint. And then you can know if your planned implants are gonna be in, in, um, in co uh, conflict with any of these screws. And so if they're gonna hit. And so um, it's really nice to be able to, to know if you're gonna have interference with these screws. This is the, the post-op. Um, again, he did it imageless and you can see um, how this implant is in the, the perfect position. And he did it with, with Yomi Link. He did upper with the Yomi Link bone and did the lower with Yomi Go. And um, it really turned out nice. Um, Dr. Nikovic's a, a really good, again, really good oral surgeon. So, um, so why do I do this? Um, and how has it changed my practice? Again, same day guided surgery. That's really a cool option that we can, um, you know, have a patient come in with an emergency and leave with a fully guided tooth. That does allow to, us to put the implants exactly where they're supposed to go, which allows us to do better immediate loading. Um, if we have the opportunity to pre-plan the case, we can use our imported STL files and, you know, we can do immediate loaded cases as well. Um, it does allow us for a minimally invasive soft tissue management. So I typically do a really small envelope incision. I rarely do completely flapless. Um, the way I was taught by Duke Keller was, you know, tissue is easy to get rid of. It's hard to add. So I hate punching out keratinized tissue. I just like to put a little envelope incision, drill right through it. And if I need to, I can put a healing collar on or I can bury it. I get the option. If I do a punch, you may not be able to get the tissue back. I would say if you do a punch, save the tissue and you can pair krill it back in or put a crisscross suture over the top of it. Use that punch. Don't throw it away if you can save that tissue. Currently, it can place an implant from start to finish, fully guided in less than 45 minutes. The fastest surgery time we clocked, and I'm not bragging, we just did it to see how fast we could do it, was four minutes. So I was able to put an implant in from local anesthetic to unattaching the arm in four minutes, which is pretty cool. So you really can, can especially if somebody's really anxious, you can get them in and out of the chair pretty quick. My staff confidence in what we're doing, they've seen the repetitive accuracy. They like doing it. I have them really involved. They put the Yomi link teeth uh, splint in. I do the, obviously I do the edentulous one, um, but they're really involved. They're involved. My, my, a lot of times my staff will actually plan the case. I'll come in and tweak it and make sure it's right. And again, I'm committed to technology. I'm committed to being an industry leader. I want to be on the forefront of this technology. It's why I've been using it um, as long as I have. Um, but let's look, hear what Carol has to say about it. Hopefully you'll hear this just fine. Patients really get excited to know that uh, they're going to get to have an uh, implant placed uh, with a robot, as they say. And um, they, uh, the patients that we have that are sedated, they almost want to change their mind about sedation because they want the total experience and they know if they're asleep, they're going to miss out on it. And so uh, it, it's really been a positive for our patients when uh, they can, they really do grasp 
uh, the accuracy part of it, the uh, just the technology of, of placing the implant and everything. And so they've uh, really been on board and have embraced this as we have. Cool. So you don't have to wait on the surgical guide to ship or print, but one of the things you can do is if you pre-plan the case, you can export that to your lab. If you want to have your provisionals done or, you know, you can have all of that done just like with your STL files you're doing now. Um, and, and so we do utilize our lab to help us manufacture provisionals or treatment restorations, whether it be single tooth or um, full arch. So you still have that capability. Um, and again, it, it's really cool as a practice grower. I, I certainly wouldn't get involved with this for marketing because there's a lot to it. It's a disruptor. There's a learning curve. It's expensive as far as, you know, your initial investment is costly. Uh, it, it's worth it. I can tell you, I haven't used it for three years, um, but, but it is an investment. And so you want to be sure that you're doing it because you want accurate implant placement, that you want a safer way to do this. The marketing ends up being a side piece. Um, and, and I think there's so few machines in the country now that you really can, can get on board. We, we just loaded a guy and got him on boarded down in near Atlanta and he's a full arch guy, GP. It's all he does is full arch. He's doing a ton of these and it really, he does a lot of in-house printing and planning and kind of his own lab technician really. And his practice has grown significantly in that area, um, in his full arch world. I don't do quite as many full arches. I do a couple a month, three or four a month. Um, he'll, he'll do three or four a week, uh, sometimes six a week. So he does quite a bit. Um, so afterwards I saw about a 25% increase. This is one of the, like the first one we put in. Maybe second one. Audio. The patient's not sedated. This will be my last drill. Okay. It's real calm in the room. And I'm not a calm guy. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to be a little mm -hmm. cowboyish and loud and obnoxious. Um, but it's really, there, there's so much confidence in the technology. Mm -hmm. You know you're getting guidance. You know, you're watching. You can watch on the screen if you want. You can look in the mouth if you want. You've got the audio. It really is full technology, and everybody's really really. Yep. Here I'm looking at the screen and looking in the mouth. One of the things. Um, one of the things that I've done is is I've actually got some ergonomic loops now and so i'm looking at a 90 degree angle and so my head angle staying even with the screen and so it's really saved c1 c2 i was having issues before and and since i've switched um i do stand as well um based on lower back issues but you know ergonomically i'm a lot better i'm not having to do a bunch of hoops and 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 bend over and do things i'm it's much more um comfortable to do this this surgeries um i'm i don't get tired like i used to because I'm not also having to hold the handpiece so tightly and really worried about the wrist angle and all that. It's much more freeing to use. There is a mandible maxilla option. And so it, it really is easy to use. Um, I, I encourage you to play with the machine. I think Jay's got one there from what I understand. And, and uh, they'll bring it to your office in a bus and let you play with it, let your staff play with it. That's what I did. I let my staff get on the bus. I didn't, have, I didn't actually drill anything on the bus. I let them do it. And they were able to put implants in on models and uh, they were sold first. And so once the, the team was sold, I knew, you know, it, it was going to be a home run for us. And, and since then, we've seen about a 25 to 30 percent increase in in our practice. So as far as number of implants, um, which has been significant. So um, I hope that gave you the, the Reader's Digest kind of 20,000 foot view. Of, of the robotic system. Um, again, I, I thank uh, Road Dental for having me and I, I really appreciate uh, Jay inviting me in and, and uh, sorry, I'm not there live. I'll be in Columbus tomorrow. If y'all wanna come over and see us there, um, go Browns.